Welcome to Wager Talk TV. I'm Kelly Stewart at Kelly in Vegas on Twitter. I'm joined by two of our fight experts here at wagertalk.com. Kevin Dolan at the Sports Wolf 83. Yanni the Greek at the Greek underscore gambler. At the Greek. No, <laughs> at Greek underscore gambler. It's been a rough one this morning, guys. Okay, we're going to recap real quick. I want to know your opinions on Wilder Fury. Uh, from what I got to see in that fight, Kevin, Fury absolutely dominated start to finish. Uh, I was very surprised. We saw the market go Basically, Fury from the slight favorite to Wilder, money just every single direction. I mean, I was shocked to see it close at some of the places here in town at Fury plus 140, and he just single handedly won that fight. And then, of course, Wilder had some of his own uh, mm. comments at the end as to why he lost that fight. VR has a funny comment about that. I'll let him say that in a minute, but your thoughts on Wilder Fury? And I mean, it, it sounds like we're going to get a new fight, another fight already. He already he's going to exercise his claws, yeah. Yeah. I th- yeah, personally, I think that might be a mistake. Yeah. Probably. Take a fight, <laughs> but, I mean, look, we're living in the age. This is Tyson Fury's era. Uh, I kind of almost feel bad for Joshua and Wilder, especially Joshua, just because if Joshua was 10 years older, it, it'd be his era. But he lives in the era of Tyson Fury. That was one of the most comprehensive heavyweight wins I've seen in a long time. Probably actually since Fury dominated Vladimir Klitschko. It was that comprehensive. Knock, knock out, but he just did everything right in that fight. And as we said, when I put out the boxing breakdown report, Fury was the slight favourite. So, you know, huge money came in on Wilder pre-fight. Um, and obviously it was the wrong way. Wilder, I, I took the under. That's what I put out for the fight. Because I was always kind of still worried about, look, I've never seen power like Wilder's. You know, Muhammad Ali said Ernie Shavers and Mike Tyson. They all have That's power. That's always but- a concern, though, when you're betting a heavyweight mm. fight. Is it at any point in time, one guy can just clock you but and it's over. Especially Wilder. Like, I've, I've just never seen that kind of, you know, it's not even concussive power. It's just like guys just crumple to the ground. So again, you know, I was, I believe Fury when he said, I'm going to, you know, especially as VR said before, about going to the Kronk gym, you knew what his tactics were going to be, you know, kind of limit the distance, close the distance, put it on and be more aggressive, you know, and, I, and it worked. So... VR, you made me laugh right before we started this video when I said, you know, Wilder had on this crazy suit, and you go, Kelly, he trains with a 45-pound vest. Yeah, he shows all those videos of him with this big vest on training. So you've been training with it. Now it became a problem the night you were walking into the ring. Listen, he's looking for excuses or reasons. The reasons are simple. He has, like Joe Rogan calls it, the eraser, where you could make a ton of mistakes and erase them all with one right hand throughout that fight. Unfortunately, as the level of opposition increases, if you don't add to that wrinkle, top level guys are gonna figure you out and negate it. And that's exactly what happened. Tyson Fury saw in that first fight that all Wilder had was that right hand. And when he got up off that 12th round and took it to Wilder and realized Wilder can't fight backing up, he needs space. Once he saw that and then he moved the Kronk gym, that, to me, I, I loved seeing that. And with the narrative of Wilder having that eraser and the recency bias of seeing him do it to Ortiz last, it created the perfect storm for value on Fury. The wrong fighter was favored. The wrong fighter well, we can closed see that the favorite. I mean, Fury, yeah. he opened as a $2 favorite. Wilder this had run, no he's, business being he's that already big been of a favorite over He's him. already been bet up. It's, it's shocking if for this. If you saw that first fight, how Wilder could go to a minus 150 favorite or whatever he closed that is ridiculous. It, it made no sense. It was kind of crazy. All right, let's talk about the Canelo fight, May 5th. So as I'm prepping for videos for this, I realize Canelo doesn't we don't even have know an pa- opponent. His dancing partner for but the night. But Kevin, being in Europe, has some access to a couple of prices here. So Canelo minus 345, Saunders plus 275, Canelo minus 227, Smith plus 175. Give me your thoughts on those two matchups. In my opinion, the prices are wrong for that. I see Saunders as the much dangerous opponent of the two that he could choose. Uh, So wait, does Canelo get to choose or we're working out just negotiations? Well, they're they're both under the same umbrella like Eddie Hearn. So he's negotiating with that. I'm not sure which way it's going to go. I could see Smith... Billy Joe Saunders is, you know, he's very egotistical. He'll want a big price, so I would perhaps favor Smith to get the fight, but right now it's a 50-50. But just in terms of the fight itself, look, Callum Smith on paper is the much more dangerous opponent. He's so big. He's six foot three. He's got power on both hands. He's recently just come off, you know, winning the WBSS tournament, best super middleweight, unified some belts. So on paper, he's a really dangerous opponent for Canelo. But when you delve in, 
to his actual resume, it's, it, it is paper thin. I mean, when he fought the WBSS tournament, his first round match, you know, he, he barely won that. Uh, the, the, the second round, the semi-final, he was meant to fight Jurgen Bremer. You know, if you look up KG old veteran in the dictionary, there's going to be a picture of Jurgen. He's like 40 <laughs> years old German, but, you know, he knows how to fight. You know, he deconstructs opponents, gets in. Two weeks, I was ready, like, plus 500, I was going to unload on that fight. Two weeks before the, the bout, Jurgen Bremer pulls his shoulder, fight gets cancelled. Callum Smith has to fight a kickboxer. Barely had any boxing experience. Beats him, obviously, but I think it still went to decision. And then in the final... You know, he goes up against George Groves. George Groves is a good fighter, but his style was tailor-made for, for Callum Smith because he fights from the outside. And even he was going in with, sh with a shoulder injury from the semi-final. So, you know, since then, he just fought. He came off a win against John Ryder. Most people thought John Ryder won that fight. You know, and John Ryder is not an elite-level talent. So Callum Smith, yes, on paper, he looks like a dangerous opponent, but I think, I think, Canelo eats him up. I don't, okay. even, th I don't even think So you think that distance. if he fights Smith laying the 227 or whatever ends up being here in free Vegas, money. it's free, free money, money. But I, I would take him by KO. I'd increase those odds because okay. I, don't, I don't think... Like, people think the six foot three is a big advantage for Callum Smith. All that means for Canelo is more body to hit because he's... Like, no one's got a better left hook than Canelo to the body. He's got, he stopped, for instance, and another wrinkle to this fight is Canelo stopped his older brother Liam Smith a few years ago, body shot. Like left hook to the kidneys, Liam Smith crumpled to the canvas. So you're going to have this, you know, and, and just to quickly finish, like we've seen him against Kovalev. Kovalev's an old vet, but more than that, Kovalev had been, you know, he'd already lost. He wasn't like a young, hungry lion who thought he could go to town against these guys. He was cagey in that fight. He backed off Canelo because he, he knew he didn't want to get in a firefight with Canelo. You know, Smith isn't like that. Smith's undefeated. He knows, you know, he's, he's so aggressive. He, he thinks that he's going to be able to take Canelo. I don't see the fight going the distance. You know? All right, VR, I think both of these are kind of cheaper prices on Canelo that we've seen, at least historically. We know Canelo is one of the best of the best. Your thoughts on either one of these two matchups? You can't fade Canelo Alvarez right now. There, there's just, I, I don't see a name, a potential matchup for him that I'd look to the dog. Okay. Um, at only 29 years old, he's fought 55, 56 professional fights. The only loss he has is to Mayweather. And the only reason he lost that fight is because Mayweather was smart enough to pick Canelo as an opponent when Canelo was less than Before under he was 25 Canelo. years old. Exactly. And Mayweather knew that. And if he, he wanted picked to him fight him, he was green. To fight him now. Two years prior to meeting Mayweather, he was fighting in junior leagues, like under 18 leagues. Oh. I mean, he knew what he was doing when he picked them. Um, you know, Canelo Alvarez, again, right now, it looks like he's been around for a while because he beat the old guard, the Mosleys, the Baldemirs, the Trouts, the Lauras. Then he beat the current studs, the Triple Gs, the J Jacobs. Now he's beating the future, the, the guys that we're trying to find who's coming up that's going to be able to beat him. They're not going to do it yet. They're not there yet. Canelo's just so far ahead. His experience alone is a kid who has seven brothers. All of them became professional boxers, every single one. And he's the youngest of them. So he's been getting beat up and fighting since he was four <laughs> years old, man. True. You ain't beating him right now. Maybe when he's older, look after 34, 35. But between now and... Right now, he's literally in his athletic yeah, prime. you can't look to go against Saunders him. Saunders is a good fight, though. It like, is, I, I it is. Yeah, yeah. It is. It, I, I don't I, know if he could, like, he'd have to win a decision, though, right? Yeah, that's true. He would. But, I mean, if he comes in like he fought in the Mew, that's a good fight. Yeah, you it's know, a great I, fight. I, I'd rather see him fight Saunders, yeah, yeah, for I would, sure. I, too, yeah. I love that, that traveling the gypsy. I love it. I love it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's the great. year of the gypsy. Yeah, there you go. Great stuff, guys. $9 Monday at wagertalk.com and also our sister site, sportsmobile.com. That's right. All daily packages for Monday's action are only $9, which includes any 5% best bets normally priced at $40.